I think I should get mid turret. Oh! How am I dead? I actually can't believe Singe just kills me insta there. Hey there, what's up guys? Minish kind of back with some classic top lane Singe gameplay. Uh, I'm playing Unsealed Spellbook with Ignite and Ghost in this clip. I played versus Double Lift, which I think was really cool. And I um, I wanted to share this game with you guys because it's a it was a really good example of when your team starts like when like you know those games where you get ahead and then enemy team starts winning fights somehow and then your team gets aced a few times and then you know your team starts tilting so you just assume that you're gonna lose it's one of those kinds of games so i think it's a bit of a banger so 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 buckle yourselves then i made the game winning play versus double lift and it was awesome so uh this is a pre-recorded game because I wasn't, I wasn't recording or streaming whenever, whenever I uh, play this game. But that being said, it was an absolute banger, and I'm gonna comment it over for you guys. So here we are with level one proxy with Dark Seal. I don't really recommend level one proxy unless you have Dark Seal. You just don't have enough AP to clear that first wave. Um, the reason I'm able to, to level one proxy here is because we know that Viego was not starting on this side of the map. He's not pathing for his bot lane. He's pathing for top lane. You know, he his bot lane's Yumi Ezreal, so we can pretty much assume he'll play for top side. Which is the case, but Camille didn't watch the entrances, so we're able to get nice fat waves here. So she started with E, and I know she started with E, so I'm backing off early here because I just I I realize that if she walks over to me, she's gonna E me again and try and chunk me. And if you get chunked too much, then you can't actually finish the waves. But here I should have enough uh, HP to finish this off, thanks to the durability update. So we're going in for the the third wave and you can't really i i mean you, you can sort of do this with c-pot the problem with c-pot is it just takes you a bit longer to clear the wave so you're you're more vulnerable for a bit longer like you do have the sustain and you can still do a three wave proxy with c-pot but because but because you just don't have as much ap you're down 15 ap level one like you just lose clear clear speed and then that leaves you more vulnerable <laughs> vulnerable because you're you're stuck in the you're stuck in the lane a bit more so here's Graves, his uh, invade on Vega went pretty well, he got a Dark Harvest proc. Nuna's going up to back him up too, so he should be fine. I'm, I am notice how I'm not pathing into the lane immediately, I'm actually pathing towards Tribush because I see Camille like kind of walking over there. She does give up some CS for it, I ping it, make sure they know. Now she loses XP, normally what would happen is she would get about a 1 minion XP lead here because it takes time for Singe to walk back to the wave after proxying so you can normally get a, a one minion exp lead but because she just lost like xp for two or three then it just it doesn't matter we're gonna hit four on the same on the same timing i might even hit four before i don't remember exactly what happened here but she not really greedy with a call start that means that her early power is a bit weaker but that being said it is camille versus singed early so she will kind of just be stronger at most stages of the game 1v1 until later on when you actually can 1v1 her whenever you have like a lot of AP you can pretty easily 1v1 her but I'm talking like five six items here uh because Graves invaded the Viego I know that Viego's probably not in top side right now because he's like oh I gotta go clear bot side again and get my tempo back so now I'm just gonna keep proxying um I recorded this game like like two days ago or I played this game like two days ago but since then I've actually switched off of Futures Market to um she missed her E, so I fling her away. If she decides to all in, I just pop Ghost, which she did. Uh, actually, since recording this game, I actually switched to um, Dematerializer, just testing it out, seeing if I prefer Dematerializer. And the reason why I prefer Dematerializer a little bit, I think, um, is because with these these first, like, not first three cannons, but your second, third, and fourth cannon, while you're proxying, you can just zap them, and you can proxy them very quickly without worrying about being in lane. Because what, what a lot of top laners have learned to do against uh against proxy singed over the years is they realize that on the cannon wave it takes a lot longer for singed to clear the wave so they'll go and try and harass singed during cannon waves because he can't just like he can't just farm the wave super quickly and dip out right so i've noticed almost universally uh futures market there though it, it is good for buying the blasting one but i've noticed that they'll just like wait for the cannon wave and then go to like poke the singed really hard and try and get him to stop proxying so they can get a recall 
Um, and the reason why is because it takes a lot longer for Singe to clear the cannons early. However, with Dematerializer, what you want to do, if you go Dematerializer, is you can uh, not dematerialize the first cannon, but as soon as you start proxying, you can dematerialize the um, second, third, and fourth cannons while you're proxying, and that way it's a lot harder for the enemy top laner to actually come and, and match you behind tower because you're just zapping the cannon instantly, right? Plus, if you decide to go Rhylize first, which a lot of games you will, the Dematerializer helps keep you relevant. Here, we're just walking down because we know that um, Camille and Viego are over here, kind of out of position. Camille is trying to rotate and help Viego, and she's getting pretty punished for it. I have a bit of a flank here. I'm slow, because I don't have Ghost, and I'm, uh, you know, Nerf Singe Ultimate, but... Did we get this? Okay, got her flash. That's good. That's really good. Yeah, with, uh, with the Nerf Singe level 1R, it is a little brutal. Hopefully, they revert that nerf. I don't really mind the uh, I don't really mind the W nerf, but man, I feel like that level one ult nerf is so brutal. Ten movement speed and ten AP armor MR, you know, level one when you when you used to have thirty and now you have twenty, like that feels a lot more impactful, and I think it is a lot more impactful than when you go from ninety to a hundred on level sixteen. When you already had ninety, you don't notice going to a hundred as much, right? It's only it's only an addition of like ten percent or a little less than ten percent. But whenever you lose 10 and you already only have 30, then you're losing like 33%, right? Or something like that. I'm, I'm bad at numbers. Here, we're swapping to uh, Ignite Heal because I didn't have Ghost and I just wanted to make sure that if you go against me, I have a little bit of extra HP. And that actually, I think, kind of is what happens, but I'm not, I don't remember exactly. Um, I have a lot of AP here. I have Dark Seal. I have uh, Amptome and I have Blasting Wand. So if we do fight, then even though she has Sheen, I should just be mostly okay. I'm pretty sure she has Sheen anyways. So here, uh, notice I'm actually not pushing as hard as possible. Normally I would, but I saw that Viego was topside, and then Graves is here as well, so there's really no incentive at all for me to push when I don't have my ultimate up. It's just opening me up for a free kill. Here, I'm trying to play around the, the fling range in front of tower because Camille is nearby, and Graves is pinging on the way. So I actually got the fling, and then I, I W her preemptively on her, on her E. So what... Uh, we got the kill here, I do believe, with Ignite. Nice. So, the way that this works, basically, the, the E interaction, or the W interaction with Camille's E, if you put W on her before she uses it, she cannot cast it. However, if she is in the middle of casting it, or, or she casts it as you place W down, then you cannot stop her. What you can do is you can, um... What you can do is you can actually put W where you think she's going to attach on the wall, and then she's not able to like easily detach unless she gets like CC'd off of it or the, the E duration wears off. Uh, also, I want to highlight something here. Uh, let me close my webcam for a second. This is the Poor Professor Summoner Spell Tracker that I've been using. That in, in the corner, you can see that right there. Um, the Summoner Spell Tracker is super useful because it lets me just track her teleport. It's really good, especially in top lane versus teleport users specifically if they're using Ignite because the cooldown's a little bit lower and you don't like tap it until, you know, after combat. It can be a bit difficult uh, to use to use effectively, but versus teleport and 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 flash to some degree, it is actually quite quite nice. So here we are. We're gonna we're gonna keep um keep going on. I actually have an eight and a half minute Rylize here, which is super big. We did debt into futures market futures market for it. If you do decide to run futures market, here's how you know if futures market is giving you uh, big value or like sorry correct value to know that you're not overspending. So every single time you go negative gold, it takes 50 gold away from you. And there is a lending uh, a lending fee um, limit. Or sorry, uh, yeah, a lending fee limit. So right now, at nine minutes, my lending fee limit is 190 gold. Uh, so we, again, get the fling on Camille. We know that she has no flash, and then just run her down with the gank and she dies. It's super easy with Rhylize when she's that pushed up and you have a flank. But, um... So right now my lending limit is 190. So I can I can leave the base with 190 negative gold. That's my limit. And each time I leave the base, I lose 50 gold. So as long as the amount of times you lose 50 gold does not exceed what your lending limit is currently, the lending limit increases every minute. As long as your your amount of times you've spent 50 does not in does not exceed your limit, then the rune has made you gold. But if you are overusing the rune like every time you recall, then you're going to lose gold. But you can power spike very quickly if you decide to do this. So right here, I'm proxying. I get ganked by the Viego. Um, I'm just trying to cut it out. I have Rhylize, and uh, I'm pretty far ahead, so they have a hard time bursting me down. I decided to be greedy and go back around for the proxy. They engage on me, and then I pop Zonny to the last possible second. 
then he dies. I get the fling on Quirky, and I almost get out, but he flashes on me, unfortunately. But Graves cleans up, kills everybody. Super big value. <laughs> but yeah, uh, as as long as your your lending fees do not surpass your lending limits, then that means that you have essentially made gold off the rune. Now you have to consider again versus um, versus. Uh, dematerializer if losing the DPS on cannons early game is worth it because it is it is very useful very useful especially in high elo not as, it's not going to be as useful in lower elos where people don't really like know how to harass you I guess they do harass you because people always tell me they just kind of blind chase you but if you're not getting harassed behind the tower and you're just able to kind of kill your kill your minions and kill your kill your cannons then you don't really have to worry about dematerializer i think but whenever you're playing versus a top laner with a brain and they're harassing you early game behind tower on those cannon waves then you just want to make sure that you are able to dematerialize them pretty fast so right here i tried to predict her uh predictor w if i predicted that she was dead but unfortunately i couldn't do it however i'm hanging on the way we're gonna try and tower dive her with the graves i think not entirely sure i'm just way stronger than her right now so i'm trying to like harass her as much as i can even though she hit W, like I still get more health. If you if you don't include the tower, actually, but if you include the tower, yeah, I'm being super super aggro. But I know she has no ult because she used it earlier. And here comes Graves. I have exhaust here as well. Bear in mind. I think I died here. Oh yeah, I died there. Unfortunate, but that is okay. Again, we, we killed her under tower. Her TP is up soon, but we, we killed her under tower, so she loses a lot of value. Like, yeah, she gets the kill on me, but I'm keeping up tempo and keeping up pressure, and I'm getting further ahead. Um, right here, I think I was debating on selling Dark Seal for something, but I don't remember what exactly I did. I'm trying to see my... Oh, we lost bot tower first one? I think we did. Ooh, not quite yet. Okay, there's Kimiel's Teleport. I tapped it on Poor Professor. Yeah, we lose Bot Tower first blood. So Double Lift is actually getting pretty pretty far ahead. Um, they're not. He's not like farming kills yet. Eventually, it does get a bit hairy for us. But he's not like farming a lot of kills yet. I think he gets one here. Oh. Not quite yet. But um, because we're just winning mid mid and top right now, we're able to like be a little bit more relevant than we normally would, which is nice. Uh, I think here, so she has Sunderer. Sunderer did get nerfed versus tankier targets, and it got buffed versus, like, squishier targets in terms of healing. In terms of damage, I think damage went down overall with it. But the healing did go up. For Singed, you do have Grievous win, so it's not, like, the worst thing in the world. Um, personally, I've noticed that Sunderer matchups are maybe a, a tiny bit easier. I, I, I honestly can't tell. Like, the item just still seems really strong to me. <laughs> Even if it's not, like... Um, maybe as strong as it used to be it still seems super strong but the healing went up so like if your champion doesn't have grievous wounds then you're kind of just screwed versus sunderer because it again heals more now um there's also a base ad scaling component to it for what it's worth so if your champion has good base ad then you're gonna get a lot more sunderer value here i noticed graves coming top so i'm trying to like predict where she's gonna go on the wall um unfortunately it was close to the tower so i couldn't stop it completely but graves is here and nuna is here so go for the fling oh he killed me there i was trying to um i remember i was trying to just like outrange the stun but i couldn't thankfully nunu got the stun on him and graves had smoke screen so he couldn't pick up his spirit very quickly quirky split pushing tier two bottom but my team is here I was sort of confused when I saw Kaisa and Soraka show up, but hey, it works, I guess. I still need to learn what the um, what the proper like bot lane roam timings are. Like, when does bot lane roam top like this? It, it does happen quite often. I just don't know exactly what the timing is or what the uh, incentive is. Maybe just they were losing super hard. Uh, Double if takes tier one mid, so he's again getting pretty strong, and that comes into play. But. I am uh, absolutely crushing top lane. I'm one in five, but two of my deaths are executes. And then for my other deaths, we got huge value off of them. So it's like still pretty good. So technically I'd be one, three and seven, which is honestly good KDA. Pretty good KDA. Getting closer and closer slowly to demonic. 
Which, if you don't need, um, if you don't really need an engage tool, then you then you can skip going like Chem Tank or Rocket Belt. You can go into um, Demonic and Rift Maker instead. If you do, if you don't need engage, but if you do need engage, then you probably want to go Rocket Belt or Chem Tank. This game because they have um, Camille and Viego who will basically just be guaranteed to die forward. Then we're 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 chilling. We're chilling. We don't need to worry about walking forward. And plus, if you if you try and engage onto Ezreal Yumi, you're gonna have a bad time generally. Especially if that Ezreal is double lift and the Yumi is knowing what they're doing. Okay, we're forcing Rift's Herald here. Easy money. Then right now I have to I have to always keep in mind I have 220 extra gold. Almost 230, I think. Yeah, or 225. I have 225 extra gold whenever I recall for Demonic Power Spike, and I'm trying to farm Demonic before uh, Dragon Fight. I don't know if I actually end up getting it, but... Yeah, I'm hanging at 300, 400 gold, so I don't think I get it in time, but I do have Teleport up, and Camille's Teleport is down. So I know I'm playing with a TP advantage here. Okay, my team starts fighting. Camille is recalling with no TP. They do get a kill on Vigo, and then uh, I see a quirky flank down there as well. But I'm running up. Dragon gets a kill. Yumi dies. Very nice. <laughs> I didn't really get any assists there, but we just had the pressure, and then Camille couldn't really join because I was hard pushing top lane. Plus, I'm strong enough at this point where she can't really 1v1 me that easily. I think my Kaisa just flashed from Camille. I remember like seeing uh, seeing her dash in mid and I was like, did she ult or did she flash? I'm pretty sure she flashed because her ult is already on cooldown. But here we're just hard shoving bottom, trying to get pressure on the map. If you can shove lanes after a fight, I recommend it because if you can get the wave onto the tower before um, enemy team spawns, you can make them lose minion farm as well. Or just push the tower, either or, it's just super useful. So, Harold kills it. We see that the enemy team is flanking us here. They are like coming really hard for the flank. My team is getting caught by it. I see he has really Yumi there, so I decided to back off. Um, do I get off? Yeah, so as soon as Quirky jumps in, I'm, I just wanted to pop Ghost and try and get out. I saw a Nunu coming around the side, the um, the Viego Nunu. Got him with the uh, with the Ignite Fling. Unfortunately, he went CC immune with his ultimate, but we did burst him before he got a reset there, which is really good. Otherwise, that could have ended up very badly. Okay, I have Demonic now. I noticed that they're just still pushing tier 2 bottom. So I guess maybe we overstayed, but I didn't think that they would be... I didn't think that they would respawn that fast, so... My my bad on that one. Kind of, but it wasn't me really that got caught. It was my teammates that got caught, and then they ran them down to me, so... <laughs> yeah, interesting. Okay, so here's Nunu with a big pick on Ezreal. Actually, a massive pick on Ezreal. Then I ground him, and then we kill him. He, he got him with the root, then he ever frosted him, which is actually like big mega brain gameplay. Because I don't think he expected the ever frost, and then he got hit with W too, and then just he can't he can't get out. Because while he's hit with W, he's sitting inside of the Nunu ultimate as well still, and that's a big slow. I think like up to ninety percent. I forget what the exact numbers are on Nunu slow. But it does get pretty thick. <laughs> oh, one thing especially I, I forgot to mention about Dematerializers is I lose a lot less cannons. So my ultimate's down here. That's why I'm not grouped in mid with my team. I think um, this is this is one of like the downsides about Singed is like if your ult is down, you're not like super useful. I guess I could have grouped there and just tried to play with my team. But the thing is, like you can't really rely on your team. I'm trying to chase the Viego down here. You can't like super rely on your team. Because a lot of the time they just they just aren't reliable, and then the enemy top laner will go to side lane for free, or they'll just engage on your teammates and kill them. So it can be kind of difficult. Pulling the quirky in here, um, the enemy team is again just running at us, kind of through fog of war. So we gotta be careful. I got ignited there, trying to back out. Ezreal gets a kill. They could have actually chased me here. I think they they got scared of the uh, Soraka heals. Didn't want to chase into it. Alright, I'm gonna recall and reset. I think I look, yeah, I'm looking for Zanyas here. Look at that challenger recall. Oh, it's so good. The new challenger recall is really good, I will admit. I, I do like it. I'm going into debt here, and this is what I'm talking about. I actually ended up spending more in debt 
than I did than I got from Futures Market this game. And so I did lose gold on Futures Market, but it helped so much in the early game. Like you have to consider, is losing gold later worth it to get gold early and keep like keep lane dominance, keep early pressure? Like early pressure can go a very long way, especially when you're playing a scaling a scaling champion and you're getting ahead early, right? A scaling champion like Singe. Singe doesn't really like scale super hard until 16, but if you do manage to hit 16, you're you're chilling, you know. So, all right, I'm picking I'm picking them back because I'm not there and Camila's there. I notice how my team keeps going regardless because that's just what Soliki teams do. Um, I could have just pushed top and gotten massive value and XP, but they wanted to fight the 4v5 and that's how it goes sometimes. So here. We are poisoning through the portal, just in case the enemy team is trying to go through the portal and flank us. Just in case, you never know. Um, Vigo, I think, uh, yeah, he jumps in, doesn't get it. Emil jumps in. This ends up going pretty poorly because they just have a ton of AoE damage coming down through, through with Yumi and with Ezreal and Quirky. Um, thankfully, I had I had uh, Summoner's uh, Spellbook Flash, so I flashed it out, and we kept Baron. Otherwise, otherwise, that would have been very, very, very bad. Um, because if, if I died with Baron here, I think we just lose the game. As you can see, my team is tilting. I have the chat muted because I don't want to listen to whatever they're typing. Um, but they're like, they're like hitting FF and Graves is, Graves especially is hitting FF, which is like just, ugh. But here, uh, here's where the magic happens this game. This is, this is awesome. Ezreal walk, double lift walks up and I hit him with a grounding and then I got, I got the phantom fling on him. Basically you, you can fling a Tristana or Ezreal through their, through their jump. And then you can pull them back, and I'll explain how that works in a second. But I run down the uh, Yumi as well, and then Camille jumps in, or she TP's in. Diego jumps in, fling him back in, and I have I have double buffs, and I have um, uh, I wasn't about to say realize Leandries, but I have realized Demonic here. God, bring back the old Leandries, man. I miss it. Then we kill him too. <laughs> Easy, easy triple. Basically, the way it works is with Trisana and Ezreal, specifically those two champions are the biggest ones that come to mind. If if you fling on the first half of their of their jump, then you cannot fling them, and most likely what's going to happen is they're just going to jump away anyways, and your fling CC just gets canceled. However, however, what what can happen is if they if they channel their um, jump. And you fling them, but it's on the second half. Huge AoE here by Graves just demolishes them. Um, but if you fling them during the second half of their channel, they'll complete the jump, but they'll get pulled back. There's a very specific timing. You can do it to Tristana as well. And I think Viego as well on um, uh, Viego's like dash or his or his ultimate, depending. But Viego is actually not... He's not fling immune on the second half of his ultimate, which is actually kind of hilarious. Like it, like that one right there. If I timed it properly, I could have actually pulled him back. But unfortunately, I didn't time it properly. So yeah, with with Trisana and Ezreal, you always want to try and just wait a, a split second longer to fling them if you think they're gonna jump away. Don't really try for it on on purpose. But if you fling them on the second half of their jump then they can't do anything. Also right there, the Ezreal, uh, he went he went into um, Grave Smoke screen and then a Singe W, so he really just couldn't do much about it. But that being said, uh, pretty pretty much a banger game. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Uh, I had a lot of fun playing it. It was, <laughs> it's, it's, it's always fun to play versus Double If because he always, he always has good reactions and it's just, it's just a good time. So hope you guys enjoyed that one. It was, it was definitely fun and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.